Hey guys, it's me Pratima. So uh, here at Gadget Byte, my team and I test a lot of laptops, like a lot. But no matter if it's a beefy gaming laptop, a budget ultrabook, or even one with a dual screen setup, they all have two things in common. A CPU from Intel or AMD and a GPU from Nvidia or AMD. And in the discrete graphics card space, things look especially bleak as Nvidia dominates an unhealthy piece of market share even to this day. AMD has been doing its uh, own little thing for some time now, but despite all its experience and maturity, the company has not been able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Team Green quite yet. So when Intel announced that it was launching dedicated graphics cards for Windows laptops and PCs, I was really excited. But when the first reviews of Intel's new ARC GPUs started coming in, my level of excitement went from all the way up here to here. I mean, if you have watched Linus's video about it, you will know what I mean. So why am I making a video on Intel Arc laptop over half a year later, despite its underwhelming kickoff, you might be wondering? Well, after all this time, things just are not the way they were before. I am not saying that Intel has uh, fixed everything, but um, after using this laptop, the HP NV16 with Intel's Arc A370M graphics for over two months now, I think maybe it's time to give it another shot. Okay, so if you look at the spec sheet of this discrete Intel GPU, it brings everything from hardware-based ray tracing, the industry's first hardware-accelerated AV1 encoding, to some other interesting features like XE Super Sampling and Deep Link that should appeal to both gamers and content creators alike. So how come ARC's initial launch was such a disappointment then? There are just three words for that, actually, unoptimized GPU drivers. It was uh, pretty clear from the very beginning that Intel could not nail the drivers on day one. There was simply no way since these things take years to perfect. But the performance hit from the set on optimized drivers were severe. Even months after its commercial debut, the ARC A370M on my HP NV16 was not running really well. Just to let you know that this is an entry-level GPU in Intel's Alchemist lineup, which is roughly better than Nvidia's GTX 1650 and on par with the RTX 3050. So I'd kept my expectations at bay right from the very start. Even so, the ARC A370M was not performing up to my standards in essential applications like Photoshop. First and foremost, the app simply would not detect the ARC graphics for some reason. I had the latest drivers installed at that time and even specifically assigned Photoshop to use the discrete GPU from Windows settings, but no, it simply refused to work with ARC. And even the integrated Iris XE graphics was sort of misbehaving here. Even when doing some basic things like image transformation or running an image resizing script, Photoshop would lag on me. But last month, something magical happened. The new Intel R graphics driver I installed solved the issue entirely. Photoshop finally recognized my ARC A370M graphics and it now runs buttery smooth. Matter of fact, I ran Puget Bench Photoshop benchmark and it outperformed the RTX 3050 powered ASUS VivoBook Pro that I reviewed a while back. Keep in mind that Intel says the ARC A370M is originally meant to compete against the GTX 1650 instead, so this result against the 3050 is even more impressive. ARC did come a bit short in the GPU and filter score, but its overall performance cannot be understated anymore. And a part of the reason why this Intel machine is doing so well here is also because of something called Deep Link. One of its most notable strengths is that Deep Link allows the discrete ARC graphics to work in parallel with select integrated Intel graphics and core processors for improved media performance alongside better efficiency. That's especially great news for content creators who do a lot of video encoding and decoding. Uh, so I also ran Puget Bench's Premier Pro benchmark and the ARC A370M once again chewed through the competition in aspects like live playback while falling behind in export, effects, and GPU score. Besides benchmarks, exporting a custom 4K video on Premiere Pro was also notably faster here, uh, with the NV16 finishing the render at around 17 minutes, compared to over 24 minutes it took on the VivoBook Pro. 
From all this, I guess you can easily tell that ARC is quite impressive when it actually works. And this could be a decent setup if you're looking to do some casual video editing on Premiere Pro and such. I worked on a couple of 4K projects on this thing and it effortlessly handled everything from using masking effects to going through multiple layers. Whereas uh, playing with motion tracking and simple text animations on After Effects was no trouble for this guy either. The final piece of rendering test I did was with Blender and the ARC A370M pulled ahead of RTX 3050 yet again, finishing the GPU render 22% faster. Okay, with that out of the way, let's switch gears to something different now. Remember that thing I said about hardware accelerated AV1 encoding on ARC graphics? That's quite a big deal actually. Without going too much into detail, what you need to know about AV1 is that it's an open source codec to compress and decompress video content. And compared to older AVC, that is H.264 or HEVC, which is H.265 standards, AV1 manages significantly smaller files without any compromise on video quality itself. That means even if you have a slow internet connection, for instance, you will be able to stream high res videos. So I fired up Topaz Video AI to test the efficiency of AV1 encoding and wow, I am blown away. In case you didn't know, Topaz Video AI is uh, this really insane video enhancement tool that can do everything from upscale, stabilize, de-blur and denoise your videos. Anyway, when upscaling a 720p 25fps video to 4K 60fps using an AV1 encoder, the file size ended up at just 72 MB. That's over 10 times smaller versus AVC, and the video quality itself is almost identical across all codecs. But like content creation, gaming on Intel's ARC graphics has not been a consistent experience yet. Not too long ago, it thoroughly struggled to play older games that use older graphics API like DirectX 9, which has since been resolved to some degree. But still, I'm also seeing some modern games that utilize newer APIs like DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 not running well here. It originally did not let me enable DirectX 12 on games like Control because of the alleged low video memory on the ARC A370M. We know DirectX 12 is somewhat of a memory hog, but 4GB GDDR6 VRAM should be more than enough to enjoy DirectX 12 gameplay at low to medium settings. Fast forward to today, the game still loads at DirectX 11 by default, but now I can at least run the DirectX 12 launcher from the game folder without any compatibility issues. However, the ARC A370M still cannot handle MSAA that well on GTA 5. As you can see from this chart, there is a remarkable performance difference when keeping it off versus setting it at 2x and 8x. Apart from these two games, I am actually pretty satisfied with ARC's performance on other titles. It does not match RTX 3050's results in any of the games or benchmarks, which could also be because our ARC A370M has 36W TDP over 45W on the competition. But I can confidently say that this is plenty reliable for 1080p gameplay when adjusting the graphics settings a little. And for an even smoother gaming experience, Intel has also introduced something called XE Super Sampling Technology. This is similar to NVIDIA's DLSS and AMD's FSR method, which renders a game at low res and uses AI to upscale the frames to make them look as sharp as the native resolution. As of now, XESS is only available in a handful of games, but I did manage to get it running on Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and yeah, it basically works as advertised, resulting in about 26% higher average FPS on performance mode. So that was pretty much all for my long-term experience with Intel's ARC graphics. It goes without saying that Intel's entry to the dedicated GPU space is an exciting one, and also a bit of a gamble so far. It has gotten a lot better since its launch, but there's still a long way to go before Intel finally catches up with Nvidia or AMD. But seeing Intel's commitment to this industry and how positively it has handled criticism from the community definitely fills me up with hope.
So to answer the question, if you should buy an Intel Arc laptop right now, it's um, not a definite yes, but uh, it's not an instant no like it was at launch either. The Arc A370M originally appeared in some uh, pretty expensive ultrabooks, which made everyone's buying decision rather easy to consider one with an NVIDIA GPU instead. Intel's uh, pricing strategy of trying to leverage its strong brand recognition did not make any sense at all on such a weak product, but um, right now, things have changed. The GPU itself is significantly more robust, whereas some OEMs are even offering ARC-powered laptops at heavy discounts to really make you reconsider things. I can't recommend it to serious gamers just yet, but if you're a light gamer and a content creator who can get the most out of ARC's capabilities, including Media Engine, AV1 encoding, and everything else, then definitely you should at least check it out. So everyone, that was all for this video. If you liked it, do consider subscribing to our channel and hitting that notifications icon. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and I will see you in my next video.